I have to look at these two stories. I have to reflect upon the language we've heard this week, notably from, from Suella Braverman, somehow segueing in the space of, of, of six weeks from describing these poor people as invaders, an invasion on our southern coast, using the language of, of, of military, using military language and then using a military helicopter to visit an, uh, an asylum detention center. That's not accidental. And the enemy, in quotes, includes an 11-year-old boy. And then I turn my attention to the Ukrainian story, which is a, a rare example of us getting something right. The, the tariff paid to councils for each family is being scaled back from 10.5 to 5,900 per person for arrivals entering the UK. Now, the question I've got for you is why do we, and by that I mean all of us, why do we treat these two categories of refugees so differently? Why is the 11-year-old Afghan boy and his companions in that dinghy, including the ones that died, why are they written and spoken about by all of us in such a different way from these Ukrainian families? Why do I not routinely find people on social media or, or writing columns for the Daily Mail about how much money we're wasting on Ukrainians? Ten and a half thousand pounds per person. We should be looking after our own, say people who never ever look after our own. But that's what they like to say. We should be looking. So why? Why, why would Syrian, Afghan, Iraqi, okay, be spoken about, written about, talked about, and crucially, I think, for the purposes of this conversation, felt about the way that we feel I'm using we quite loosely because I don't think I do feel much different about an 11-year-old Afghan than I would about an 11-year-old Ukrainian. Why does nobody say, for example, they should all stay in Poland because that's the first safe country you get to when you come out of Ukraine? Why do all of the spurious, bogus, often racist arguments that I hear about refugees in general not apply to Ukrainians? Why does no one ring me to say they should all stay in Poland? Why are they coming here? They should stay in the first safe country. It's a bogus line, but it's now spouted from cabinet right down to the dirtiest corners of Fleet Street. So I don't know how cross you can get with an ordinary punter for regurgitating that line, that nonsense that's neither law nor, nor practice, that you stop in the first safe country or you shouldn't be coming to the UK if you've come through France. It's just crud. It's absolute balderdash. But I don't know how cross you can get with, you know, Doris in Ongar for ringing in and repeating it to me when she's heard it come from the mouth of the Home Secretary.